Hey, good top of the morning to you whosoever. Sorry guys, I barely got out of the gym. I was running. I hope uh, you're having a great day, guys. Um, we're trying to get into the Word. Trying to get into uh, the preaching of, the, of Jesus Christ. And telling, and basically, you know, the, the final outcry of what God wants to do in our lives. Today's... Uh, we were talking about Revelation 16, but I, I've been reading this, and I just wanted to maybe take a little hiatus from going verse by verse um, in the Bible. But do you ever ask a question? Do you ever ask your question, how long or how old are you going to be when you when you get to heaven? You know, am I going to be a teenager? Am I going to be the same age? Am I, am I going to be an old man? You know, the, 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 the question that has, how old am I going to be when I get into heaven? So, uh, this is a great book right here. It's by um, the Bible Answer Book by Hanegraaff. It's really been blessing me, uh, and hopefully it blesses you. It says, how old will I be when I get to heaven? Scripture does not specifically address the issue of apparent age. However, it does provide glorious insights concerning the state of our resurrected bodies. First, when God created Adam and Eve in Eden, he created them with apparent age and in the prime of their life. Additionally, Jesus died and was resurrection at the prime of the physical development. Thus, we are justified in believing that whether we die in infancy, in our prime, or at old age, we will be measured physically mature and perfect as God has originally intended. Some say... You're going to be, everybody's going to be 33. We'll find out at our prime. Therefore, our DNA is programmed as in such a way that at a particular point, we reach optimal development from the functional perspective. For the most of it, it appears that it teaches us to stage somewhere in our 20s or 30s. Prior to this stage, the development of our bodies, anabolism, exceeds the dev devotion, devolution of our bodies, catabolic, from the point on, the rate of breakdown exceeds the rate of buildup, which eventually leads us to grow old. Okay. Physical death. All of us in this way say it that if our blueprint of our glorified bodies is in the DNA then it would stand to reason that our bodies will be resurrected at the optimal age of development determined by our DNA. Finally, one thing we can be totally certain in heaven is that there's no deformation. The body tarnished by um, humanity's fall into life of constant sin, con terminated by death, will be utterly transformed. You will be the perfect you. And I will be, the, and I will be the perfect me. Indeed, in heaven there will be no more death, nor mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things have passed away. Revelation chapter twenty-one verse four. For further study, read this from the book of Isaiah chapter twenty thirty-five verse five and six, one through six, five and six. Then will our eyes of the blind be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame leap like a deer, and the mute tongue shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness, and the streams in the desert. Now, again, how old are we going to be when we get to heaven? Well, we're going to be perfect, a new body. We're not going to age, and we're not going to have grow old. We have, we're going to live for eternity. I mean, it's Satan... Satan doesn't tell you that. Satan wants you uh, to believe a lie. You know, today I was thinking to myself, you know, God <clears throat> gives us the water and the air and the earth, and he doesn't charge us rent, but Satan does. Satan has his minions, his banking cartel, charging people rent, and, you know, God made the food and the fruits and the animals and everything we eat and the plants that grow, and God gives it freely. While Satan, again, you know, is behind the scenes he, he, to enslave mankind. He does, he's not your friend. Let me tell you this much, guys. Satan is not your friend. You must be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. 
you know. But we know that the closer we get to chapter 16, we're going to see that, uh, remember, the the world is going to go into full darkness. Uh, like the Catholics teach us, uh, tres dias, tres dias de oscuridad, three days of darkness. I don't know. But we know that the Bible says that the, the great river Euphrates and the waters, therefore, were dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. You know, guys, God is going to dry up the Euphrates River so the kings of the east, who are going to be, uh, uh, the Bible says they're going to be moved by spirits of frogs. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to say ribbit, you know, go to Gumengido, you know, the spirits. Fallen spirits are going to gather the, the kings of the earth to go and navigate. Um, because another thing you, you might take note that uh, the Euphrates, the, the, the river Euphrates, uh, the, for the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. The Euphrates is a river. Um, if you read the Bible in the book of Genesis, it, it was the cradle. It was the cradle of a man's civilization. Um, but as we get into the end times, it's going to be the cradle of of man's grave many men are going to go to the to go to Megiddo to die uh, and then end up in the lake of fire and in and, and the white throne and in hell in the lake of fire you know this is going to be again a, a featured battle in the in the tribulation hour um, pastor McGee seems to believe that uh, the kings of the east are, are, is going to be more of a war not a battle so it's going to be you know, constant. But we know that the Antichrist, halfway through the tribulation, declares himself to be God in Jerusalem, in the re new rebuilt temple. You know, uh, God made a covenant with Abraham, who was called a Hebrew. Um, you know, some interpret the word Abraham to be those who came from the other side of the Euphrates. The Euphrates was the eastern border of the land God promised to Ab to Abraham. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given thee the land, and from the river of Egypt unto the great river of the great Euphrates. Genesis chapter 15, verse 18. It also becomes the eastern border of the Roman Empire. Now, the Euphrates River will be miraculously dried up, thus erasing the border between the east and the west, so the kings of the sun rising might come to battle the Armageddon. In the past... Uh, Tamerlane came out of the east and swept across the plains as tremendous horde. So does Genghis Khan did the same thing. Those were just little previews of what's going to happen in the last days. After the Euphrates River is gone, the great hordes of the east that have never moved west will come to great crusade of Palestine. The bulk of the world population is in the east. And having only a smattering of the gospel, they will choose the Antichrist, the beast of revelation, the man of sin. The picture is frightful. Can anyone doubt with the hundreds of millions pouring into Palestine that the blood will be as deep as the horse's brittle? Again, um, we know that one of the people who are going to be responsible uh, for moving the, 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 the armies of the world is Satan and in his faults uh, Messiah, the Antichrist, and, and and the false prophet. Again, knowing that, and I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, excuse me, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of the Lord God Almighty. Now, Think about it. If you're in the tribulation, then you're in, in God allows this message to stay. You know, maybe God is going to tell Satan, you better leave Tony Romo's uh, YouTube channel up because I used him. And if you mess with God, he's going to make it terrible. So I'll let you have this. Everybody's going to be given an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. God is going to make a plan. You know, there's a great harvest coming. I believe it. I believe it. Catholics and Christians and Mormons and all people from all religions are going to get saved by believing the simple gospel that man died, that Jesus died on the cross, shed his blood for the atonement, gave us access to God the Father. You know, again, um, here, 
uh, we are introduced into the trinity of Satan, the Antichrist, and the false prophet. They act in unison in, in forcing the nations of the world to march against Israel in an attempt to destroy God's purpose on earth. Remember, the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back to Jerusalem with one foot on the Mount of Olives and the other foot somewhere else. <laughs> I don't remember exactly, but God gave certain promises uh, in the Bible, and that's what Satan is trying to get. Let's gather up all these troops. Let's gather up everybody to go in there, and we'll, we'll, we'll stop him from coming. That's not going to happen. Abraham uh, believed God's promises. Remember, he made God made a covenant with Abraham. It's not Abraham made a covenant with God. God made a covenant with Abraham and the Hebrew people, and the covenants are going to stand, just like John 3.16 says, um, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life again uh, Satan wants to destroy God's covenant Satan wants to pervert um, God's word about salvation and make, make it into traditions of men Satan moves in and bring in the whole world against this little nation called Israel this will happen as sure as tomorrow's sun going up until those days they don't I mean I guess maybe the world can't be darkened and the sun still could be there we don't know now hopefully it's not cold but what a tremendous scene as we see we see frogs God says demon like spirits like frogs um, go to Megiddo go to Go to Megiddo. You know. He's trying, Satan is trying to crush the lamb and his covenant with Israel. It's not going to happen. The Bible says, as in chapter 9, the seven spirits of God and of Christ went forth into the earth to make up and gather together into one holy fellowship, the great congregation of the sanctified. And so these spirits of hell go forth upon the kings of the prom potents of the world to make up and gather them to the great army of the devil worshippers. So if you find yourself in the tribulation and you take the mark in your right hand and you're following the, the, the beast of Revelation and the false prophet, you are devil worshippers, carnal. Sorry to say it, but you're devil worshippers. In our way, in our own day, we have seen the news media can become propaganda agents but in the end times, these are all going to be propaganda ages for Satan, the false trinity, the, 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 the false prophet. Um, telling you to take the mark, it's a good thing, FDA approved. <laughs> I told them Jesus Christ was coming, carnal. I told them. I told them. No matter what's going on, guys. It, if you watch the news, guys, they're they're reading the exact same thing. Fifty different news stations at one time every every day at five o'clock. It's called the AP News. They've done that on YouTube. Go watch it. It's exactly it's verbatim. We're being we're being law we're being lied to. We're being conformed. Or they're taking away your rights. They're making you charge money. What was free is being charged. Everything's being moved to bring in a carbon tax system made out of six protons, six neutrons, six electrons. They're bringing in Agenda 21. They're bringing in um, 666. They're bringing in global government. Why do you think they're not securing the borders? They want global government. They want to they want to send a hundred million people to New York, to uh, uh, to L.A. and crash the economies. We're paying $12 billion for 100,000 people to house them, to feed them, to give them work, to give them... What, why do you come to America? We just want to work. <laughs> the news media is brainwashing the public. If they really, if they were really telling you the truth, they would tell you about Jesus Christ being your Lord and Savior, and telling you that He died for you on the cross, and He shed His blood for an atonement, for a propitiation before God the Father. You know, they're carrying out Satan's things. The news media will brainwash the public to take the mark of the beast. This is exactly what the Trinity of evil will do. They will brainwash the nations of the world into marching against Israel and turning against the God of Israel, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, 
Jesus Christ. Now the Lord Jesus is the only one who can stop this. Israel's help does not come from the north or from the south or from the east or from the west. Thus their trouble is coming from. Their help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So may the Lord bless you guys. Be good and don't forget to run, to exercise your spirit, to read the word of God, exercise your mind, and, you know, lift some weights. And as the closer we get to the end times, that, that you may be a light and a salt. For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, question arises. What are you going to do? Because everybody who's been born and began has been given at least one gift. Now, be faithful in the little gift you have. Because if not, God is going to take it away. And he's going to give it to me. <laughs> the Apostle Paul says, I hope I stir him up into jealousy for the Lord. Where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God bless you guys.